Hey there, welcome to an intermodal update presented by Odyssey Logistics and Technology. I'm Andrew Cox, a senior retail analyst here at Freight Waves, and today I get to speak with Barb Slaughter, who's the president, and Diane Lyons, who is the vice president of sales at Optimodal, which is an, a subsidiary of Odyssey Logistics and Technology, one of the intermodal divisions there. Ladies, thank you for joining me. And Diane, I want to start with you, and I want to focus in on liquid bulk uh, intermodal services for a moment. Can you just tell me a little bit about that service and why shippers would decide to go that route versus maybe a tanker truck? Sure. Well, our service is all about helping shippers solve both cost and capacity challenges, which are typically associated with shipping liquid bulk over long distances. And we use our own fleet of 20-foot ISO tank containers to provide a solution that's very comparable to tank truck. We load about the same quantities, which is normally 44 to 45,000 pounds of product. And the loading and unloading processes for ISO tanks are the same as for a tank truck. So it's a very easy transition when converting to intermodal. And the main way that we're different is mostly transparent to the customer. And that's that we're using the rail for the long haul portion of the move. So that's how we're able to generate savings and free up very valuable driver resources and also reduce carbon emissions. You know, from an environmental impact, running on the rails is obviously much better. And as you said, it does free up a lot of the driver resources that we are very constrained for right now. Can you just talk to me a little bit about, you know, how long it takes? Uh, I think that's probably the one pushback that you guys might get on using the rails that it takes a little bit longer. Can you just talk to me about how much longer it takes and also, you know, what can shippers do to adjust for this longer time? Sure. Well, the intermodal trains are very fast and efficient. They're pretty tank truck competitive in most cases. Uh, if you want to look at Chicago to Los Angeles as an example, it's going to take at least three days to get out there in a tank truck and the intermodal train is five days. So we will take a few days longer, but from what we see, shippers are typically able to adjust pretty well to that type of differential. And if you factor in the lead time plus the transit time, we might actually come out ahead because we only need to find a driver to go from the shipping site to the closest rail hub that we'll be using. And if you wanna use a tank truck, you're gonna to have to find a driver resource that's available for a much longer haul move, and that can take longer. But there's still gonna be situations where shippers struggle to make an on-time delivery, even when they're using tank truck. So in that case, we offer a forward storage solution. And this is where we ship our loaded ISO tanks out to a depot location that's located near the end user. And we're able to hold the containers there economically until the product is needed. So that's really a great use of intermodal. The shippers are able to get all the benefits of shipping intermodal, and they can also offer a service enhancement to their customer through this local point of supply. Diane, it seems like that you know the ISO tanks do allow you to have some add some flexibility and some agility into the supply chain. That's something every shipper, no matter what they're shipping, is trying to search for right now because of our lack of drivers, the shortfall that's happening right now. It's one of the biggest challenges across all modes uh, of over-the-road transportation. Barb, can you talk to me a little bit about that challenge and some of the other challenges you are seeing in the industry and what are some of the upcoming trends you see emerging? Sure. Um, as you mentioned, uh, currently the biggest challenge facing our industry is driver capacity and more specifically a shortage of tank truck drivers. Um, the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, our industry lost a lot of tank truck drivers um, as the demand for both gas and chemicals dropped. Um, the additional certification and training required for tank truck drivers means that even as drivers are being added back into the workforce, few are likely to become tank truck drivers. Um, add to that the aging uh, driver population, and we are faced with a severe driver deficit for the long term. Uh, needless to say, for tank truck drivers that are out there right now, uh, long haul over the road trips are certainly not appealing. Um, they don't want to spend days or weeks away from their family. Um, as we said previously, intermodal transport limits the need for long haul drivers uh, with shorter origin and destination days. And that's appealing not only to the drivers that are in the driver pool right now, but also to the new younger driver recruits that are entering the market. Um, and finally, sustainability is always an ongoing concern. Uh, converting to long haul, converting long haul truck to domestic rail intermodal transportation takes trucks off the road, uh, thus improving overall fuel, fuel efficiency and reducing carbon emissions. 
Um, it's really a straightforward transition from tank truck to intermodal. Uh, so I hope our industry fully embraces that to help keep drivers closer to home and reduce their carbon footprint all at the same time. Right. It does seem like a straightforward transition. It is a viable option, intermodal compared to tanker truck or compared to over the road transportation. It's a viable option in every time, given that it makes such a big environmental impact. You can ship the same quantities or very similar quantities uh, over the rail, and it also frees up the drivers. That is such our big problem right now is keeping drivers in their local market and, and freeing up drivers because this problem isn't going away. As you said, we do have an aging population. Uh, we have the drug and alcohol clearinghouse. We have very few CDL issuances compared to historical past. So this driver shortage is not going anywhere. So we need to find ways to free up driver resources, especially keep them in home markets, and intermodal uh, is one way to do that. So thank you so much, both of you, for your time and insights today. And thanks, everyone for paying attention to us. We've got plenty more of these updates coming for you from Odyssey Logistics and Technology. Stay tuned right here on FreightWaves.com for more.